Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Saturday. Uh, I am up to get ready to go to my uncle's house for my family Christmas brunch. <laughs> this to the video but I am I have to take a pregnancy test so we are going to see if your girl is or if your girl isn't so I got this off of Amazon yesterday um I really don't think that I am but I'm just gonna do this for safety measures um just to be sure because y'all your girl's stomach is a little too round for my liking, and I'm gaining you no know, hip and thighs in the last couple of months. So I'm just trying to make sure. Okay, here is the results. Not pregnant. Womp, womp, womp. But I know a lot of these um, tests can be false positive, so I have another one. And I'll probably wait like another week or so before I take another one. But I really, really doubt that it's going to be positive then too. But this is the result. So I can, you know, rest my nerves, whatever. Okay, so you guys, um, I just jumped off the shower, whatever. I am about to read braid my hair and keep it in the style that I had it in all week because I just don't feel like the hassle of doing anything to it right now so this is what I am doing I'm going to just take it out it was just a um, smaller ponytail in the back and I have braided two braids to uh, one on each side um, attaching it to the braid in the back so just something simple so that I can go ahead and get ready to get out of here for the festivities Y'all, I cannot tell you how tired my hands be when I have to braid my hair like this in two braids or whatever. Um, it's easier for me to do the right side than it is for me to do the left side. And y'all, anywho, I did it. It came out cute. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and knock this on out real quick. After I take the scarf off and put this on until I put my shirt on, until it's time to, until it's time to go. So.
Chin hairs. I guess I have hair system. PCOS. So, yeah. y'all so my shirt is so cute they wanted us to wear like a christmas shirt or whatever so i got this off of amazon it says dasher dancer prancer vixen moscato vodka <laughs> tequila blitzer so yeah you know i gotta stand out from the crowd i think this is really really gonna be a dope shirt considering the fact that my uncle owns a bar in his garage so yeah, this would fit perfectly. I think I'm going in too. Gotta put my little necklace on. And I don't know which ones to wear. I might wear these because they got a little bit of razzle dazzle on them. So, this breakfast start at 11 o'clock, coffee is not about my ass, but it. Cute, cute, cute. Cute, cute, cute. I'm just going to be going very, very, very relaxed. A little Christmas shirt, some jeans, and some black boots, and go on by my business. It is not going to be not that spectacular. Cause then I gotta get ready to come back home and get ready for the big event tonight. We're going to the um tonight's conversation with Ace Metaphor and his friends, whatever. It's gonna be at the Huntington's place, the old Kobo, if you're from Detroit. Um, I'm about to have a good time tonight. I cannot wait. Me and my little ride or dies, my sister boo, we all going. You know, just have a good time, you know. You know, they talk about a lot of relationship stuff. They don't hold nothing back to ask them any type of questions. And they don't, you know, talk to the audience, you know, interact with everybody. It's just going to be a good old time. I cannot wait. Um, this is um, one of my birthday gifts to me because I've been saying for so long, oh, I want to go to one of these. Oh, I want to go to one of these. And it is finally here today. So, yeah. Yeah. So, me and guy friend is not a thing anymore. Long story. Just know that he was trying to move in on me. 
like, no, that's not, no, you can't move in here with me. Yeah, I might let you stay the night, a lot of days out the week and stuff, but you can't move in with me. Like, he, he was supposed to be finding him a place, right? Okay, cool. I'm going to help you out because you just got this job and um, his family and stuff live deep, deep east side, but his job is here in Highland Park, Michigan. So that's a long drive for somebody who's doing 12-hour shifts, you know, leaving early in the morning. So I said, you know, I'm closer. So, you know, how about I let you, I help you out and you can come stay here during, during your work days or what have you so that you won't be doing all that driving. And so that you could find you a department or whatever the case may be. So, like, okay. One month go by, which is suspected. He just started. Two months go by. Three months go by. And I'm just like, okay. So, I have to start asking, like, what is the plan? What is the game plan? Are you looking for a place? Because my stance have not changed. And he would tell me this and tell me that. And I'm like, okay, but whatever. And then it had dawned on me. Because the last time I asked him, he didn't say anything. He was like, because we kind of like got into an argument. And I was like, so when is, well, what's up with your apartment hunting or your house hunting? What that got to do with anything right now? I said, uh, there it is. You was never looking for a place in the first place. You thought that you were just going to mosey your ass on up in here. Because we're kicking it. Like, don't try to manipulate me. Don't try to take my kindness for weakness. Don't be trying to be on no bullshit with me. Because technically, I'm not even supposed to have your ass in here. So the fact that you tell me what your apartment hunting have to do with what's going on right now lets me know that you was not actively looking. And I need you to actively look. And y'all, it was just a whole situation. And... I was like, I can't do this. You're becoming a distraction. You're becoming toxic. Like, you're becoming toxic. Your 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 jealousy, your your attitude. You're always wanting to be up under me and always, well, who you going with? Wait, what time? Boo, boo, boo. Like, dude, you need to work on yourself. You're toxic. So. I had to let that go yesterday. Like, he packed up all his stuff. And, um, yeah. So, that's the end of that. Um, it's time for me. And the thing about it is, he was somebody old, somebody that I used to go with way back when or whatever. And decided to get him another chance. And it's like, okay, yeah, no. See, this is the issue. I'm not, I can't keep going back for more. So, I'm about to start looking for a new man. And, you know... Give somebody else a chance to, you know, prove they self to me. Because you obviously just proved yourself to me. You thought that I was just not going to say none of you. And that you were just going to mosey your way on up in here. And, mm -mm. No. I'm still single, sir. I did not officially agree verbally to say, I want to be your woman. I want to be your lady. I was helping you out until you got on your feet. That's it. That's all. But my fault. Accountability. Ladies, you have to learn how to take accountability for your fuck-ups, um, your bad choices, all that stuff, and move on. So I take accountability for that. I fought myself for that because I made him too comfortable, but I had to make his ass uncomfortable. And then had a nerve to text me yesterday and say... Am I still coming over there after I get off work in the morning? Nigga, you don't pack your shit, the, the your 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 deodorant, the toothbrush. I let you let you have your clothes, and you gave me my keypad. How are you gonna sit up here and ask me that question, motherfucker? You made your choice. Going on over to the deep deep east side when you get off work. You put your foot in your mouth. And I keep that bitch there. Good night. And that was that. Didn't text me back. 
I apologize. I blew up. I was upset. How can I make it up to you with a um a a, a little monetary gift or whatever the case may be? I said, ain't no flowers or anything that you're trying to offer me. It's going to change the fact that this is something that you do every time that you get upset. And me, I'm not your woman. No, you can't come back. Absolutely not. I said it wasn't no flowers. It was it was gonna be a cash gift. But guess what, sir? Out of all the months that you've been here, you have not offered to pay a bill. Well, you no, know, he paid my DCE bill. You have not offered to pay my rent not one time for this month, right? Yeah. Don't be trying to give me no cash gifts now. Keep it. Keep it. So y'all, it was a whole situation. I said I can't do it. I deserve better than this. Um I'm settling because, oh, he's showing me attention. Yeah, but you, you're sneaky, you're conniving, you're manipulative, and I peep game, and I don't want to be a part of that. Absolutely not. So I had to let him go. Like, baby bird, get your wings and fly. Yeah, because see, you want somebody to fucking take care of you. I'm not about to take care of you right now. No, I'm not about to take care of you like that. Mm -mm. And if we not, and you're not even trying to marry me or nothing like that right now. No, if you move in here with me, no, no, we if we get we engaged. We ain't planning. We planning to get married. That's that's how that was gonna go. So if you weren't ready to put a ring on this finger, you no, uh uh So lesson learned, ladies. Don't let no nigga move in with you if he ain't got a game plan. And if he has a game plan and he say he does, and what he's going to do, you hold his ass to that. Because if you don't say nothing, if you don't keep on his ass about it, he gonna he's not going to say nothing to you. And he's going to keep staying with you. And he's going to keep being comfortable until you feel like, well, well, shit, you you been here all this time, you might as well move in. But that's that's the plan. That's really the end game. But stay on the ass. And if he ain't sticking to the plan, bye bye, bye bye. Anywho, I am about to continue to get ready. I love my shirt, y'all. About to continue to get ready. Okay, you guys. So I decided to put on. My red glasses, I got some green ones like this. I said, why not be a little bit more festive? Put these on my eyes for a little razzle-dazzle. I'm um, about to take this scarf off. Ooh. And I'm actually, I might use this as like a little scarf around my neck or whatever when I go outside. And, uh, yeah, I got to get ready. My brother is almost here. I'm gonna put this on. And yeah, this is what it's gonna be. This is what it's gonna be. I'll see y'all. Okay. And yes, oh, yeah. you got them. Yeah. And we got them. Um, so you don't. You can't touch these gifts. Okay. You can look at them. Now the the guess how much coins in the dish game. I don't know exactly right. what she want to call it, but whoever the glasses, the closest get to win this Moscato. You get that on your shirt, Moscato. Mm -hmm. Just take the black thing and put it in a bowl. Okay. There you go. Mm. This is it. I ain't seen you in a long time. Is that same? I should have known. Huh? That's it. You yeah. said it right. Oh. Oh. No. 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 Donna said it. I ain't oh. seen it in a long time. Oh, yeah. You ain't seen it. That's it. That's it. You ain't seen it. Yeah, we see you. My uncle's boss. I see you back then, baby. 
about the Pac Man gone. Right, right, right. Popcorn yeah. machine gone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Person that proceeds. Oh, so just whatever the right, just the person. Christmas brunch. So of course I'm always in my bathroom because my bathroom has the best lighting. But anywho, so I won a shower thing so I can shower speakers so I can play my music in the shower. I've been wanting one of these for the longest time. Love it, love it, love it. And y'all, we had a trivia game and your girl snapped. Okay, she snapped. And guess what I won? And this is not a big one piece Kit Kat. It has multiple mini. It's probably like 40 pieces in here. Yeah. I'm going to be eating on this till probably like March. And everybody's like, dang, dang. You know all the answers. See, if you pay attention to the news and history and politics, and you know, just you know, being hip to the slangs and all that type of stuff. They had like a little 
trivia card game or whatever. And I was eating their asses up. Like, don't play with me. I came to win, okay? I didn't win with my shirt, but I came to win. And I had an amazing time. My mama was there. She had an amazing time. She don't never really get out, so it was good for her to see her brothers and sisters and stuff like that. So, yeah. Had a, a great time. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to throw a wig on over this and um, get myself together because my friends are coming at 6.15. So it's going to be down there by 6.30 and everything like that. And um, yeah. I'm trying to listen to the music as I every job I had, I don't have to drag past multiple times. I'm not here. You got We'll take that bar back. We'll go a bar or two back and digest the food for thought a little bit slower. So we're gonna tap it like this. This first piece is just me expressing, just me talking my shit. So here we go. When you've been on top for a minute, they act like you can't win again. <laughs> All right. When you've been on top for a minute, they act like you can't win again. But that's like telling hustlers like us that we can't live again. But these boots are made for walking East Coast baby, so you know the brand's Timberland. Oh. Most won't get that because they lack in hand. <laughs> I said they so back and forth with the love, you would think they was at Wimbledon. I'm to the source with it, I deal with no whack middlemen, and I never switch characters, no Aunt Vivian. Please follow me, Jay Martinez, the poet, J-A-Y-M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z, the poet, on all social media platforms. I have a table out there in the little market area in the hallway. I have shirts. Um, I have this one. It says love, L-O-V-E, learning, observing, vibrating, evolving. As long as you know that you're always doing that, you will transcend. It don't matter if you got two master's degrees or three bachelors. There's a life experience that will put you on your ass. So you'll always be learning okay. and learning, vibrating and evolving. Don't matter how tremendous experience it is. And never forget that you are not your parents' toxic traits. Woo! Be you. Be you. Texas. He is part of a podcast called The Crew Season. Make some noise for my man, Trio A. Make some noise for Kitty! Oh. 
brothers I know. Make some noise for my man, Trip Fox! For my girl, Kita Rose! You're having issues with your partner. How would you like for your space to be more safe? You know, you're talking about how do I express if I'm in a relationship? Now, let me tell you something. This question, y'all about to be like, this is a question. No, it's a real thing. Because a lot of men struggle with feeling like now we're gonna debate whether or not it's a legitimate feeling or not. We ain't gonna debate. <laughs> Shit, you better you debate that. Ain't gonna fuck up about this fuck up. But look, so if as the men that's on the panel right now, when you have conflict, how do you address it with your partner without being accusatory, but really just saying exactly how you feel and without backing down to where your um, your needs are being unheard? I think it's important to. Uh, like there's difficulty expressing how they truly feel inside of a relationship. Definitely, I think you know, men are men are kind of you know taught and raised to like be machines, emotionless machines, right? So. This tutelage happens not only to the men, but to the women. So when they get into relationships with men, it's kind of awkward to even hear men expressing vulnerabilities, right? And it's even more awkward for us to express vulnerabilities because we tie that to us lacking in manhood and lacking in our manhood. Oh, uh, again, I think it's important to uh, consider what you said, actually, which is that when you pose to your partner that there's an issue, that the focus be on the issue and not on your partner. That's how you prevent it. you you prevent it from becoming accusatory. Now I think when your feelings are involved, that becomes difficult. Uh, so the balance to you expressing your feelings completely while also keeping the atmosphere safe for your part your, your partner to receive this is using I statements, focusing on this is how I felt when this happened, right? Not like you did this to me and I did not. It's like nah, bro. When you said such and such, this is how I felt. I received it this way. You know what I'm saying? That way you you still putting the onus of it on you and you letting them know that this is the- I'll give you some acronyms to remember, okay? L-U-V-D, listen, understand, validate, empathize. Okay, that's the way that you create sympathy. That's the way you create safety for a man, okay? But also understanding that just because he has an opposing argument or just because he has a difference does not mean that you're necessarily wrong. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. You have to be able to give a layout or give a platform, a space for him to be able to express himself in a non-judgmental area. If he says, you know, or if he brings up a concern or a grievance or something like that, you don't necessarily have to agree. You want to validate the feeling that's present. You may not agree with the experience, but at least validate the feeling because that's what's going to be most important. Also, make sure that you're listening. You are fully listening, not to rebuttal. Good morning, happy Sunday. Uh, I just woke up, it's almost the afternoon. Ooh. And uh, my eyes always water like really bad when I wake up and I don't know why. Okay, but um, it is Sunday, I'm just waking up, it's almost no time. Um, I just wanted to get on here and give a recap of my events from Saturday, yesterday, y'all. I had an eventful day yesterday. Your girl was tired. I didn't get home till like almost midnight last night because the tonight's conversation pretty much ended. Uh, I want to say a little after 10 o'clock but me and my friends uh we end up going somewhere i couldn't record after a while because my phone died so i didn't get the at the party effects that we did or whatever but we went somewhere for like an hour or so and then i came home 
so yeah it was it was nice uh the only takeaways that i would give tonight's conversation is for that amount of people and for how big the um, um space was of course you're going to have a lot of people all the way to the back they had screens that the people in the back could barely see they didn't have them raised up high enough as if like you know if you was at a, a mega church and they got their screens they got it high enough to where people in the back can see them comfortably so with the tickets to be almost sixty dollars or was sixty dollars i feel like the people in the back really didn't get an experience you know they did have a vip um admission too but some people can't afford that so you can't fault people for that so I just feel like the next time they do something like this, they need to take in consideration the people that are further to the back, even though it was general admission. The people that were further to the back, because the lines were long. And even if you got there in enough time, the lines were still long. Like it was over 30, it was over 3,000 people there, I believe. So it was a nice amount of people there. So regardless, if you got there two hours early, you still would have been in line waiting a long, long time. And you still probably would have got a back seat, even though it's general mention. And I felt like the stage, oh, I felt like the stage could have been up a little bit more too, just so that we could actually see y'all. Like the, that was one big takeaway for me the other big takeaway for me was i feel like even though i wasn't part of the vip section i feel like the vip section i would have kind of been a little bit upset about that because my seating shouldn't be the same way as the general admission seating like i feel like all of the vip people should have been up front and not on the side that's just my personal opinion but other than that the show was amazing they did three 25 set podcasts, 25 sets. So, um, it was lit. Everybody was lit. Detroit always lit. You know, the DJ did his thing. He played a lot of other songs. Like, the crowd was lit. We didn't have any drinks. We didn't have any snacks. We didn't have any of those things. And I feel like if I'm giving y'all VIP off of y'all VIP. At least the VIP should have got drinks and chips or something. Like, that's just my personal opinion. But all in all, it was a nice setup. Brandy, our girl Brandy, who is from Detroit, she held it down. I love her. But I also love Kitty Rose. That woman, and I'm not afraid to say it, that woman is a gorgeous, sexy, chocolate woman. She is gorgeous, and I had the pleasure of taking a picture with her, which I will post in the video as well. And I got both of her little work journals or whatever, workbooks or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to be doing a lot of self-work on me now going into the new year. So I think her books is going to really, really help me. Um, so yeah, that was that on that. But as far as like the family brunch, it was an amazing time. I was also thinking that I I want to start doing story times, um, just stuff personally about my life and everything like that because I got some recent stories for y'all. I know I touched on one of the stories when I was getting ready for the Christmas brunch or whatever, but I got another story, and I could say in both of these stories. I have to take accountability for my part in the situations. But, you know, sometimes when it comes to these niggas, us women, we tend to not see it for what it is, but what we want it to be. So, I think I'm going to start doing story times. Um, I might actually have a story time for y'all later on today. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so... I am, oh, and I also, yeah, I've been eating on my little, I want to say thin apple chips, 
and they are really good I actually put them in the refrigerator and they got a little bit more crispier or you know harder or whatever and they really really good so this for me it's like a nice little snack keep me from eating a whole bunch of junk food nine liters chips cookies donuts like I can make these and eat these on a regular like and I'm gonna do some oranges as well yeah I'm gonna do some I'm gonna do some peaches I'm gonna do some um, mangoes and stuff too I just gotta go back to randazzles and get my fruit or whatever well these are really really good mm. but I'm gonna go ahead finish eating on a few more of these and get my little day started just do some little self-care situations or what have you and um yeah i'll see you guys on the next video bye